He'll, he'll protect me all at the same time. See, that's why when you're going through something, don't worry about it. God is a shield. Wait a minute. Watch it. I'm trying to get through the verse. It says, for the, the Lord bestows, watch this. Here it is. He bestows favor. Here it is. And honor. This, this part right here, two of y'all might shout. Y'all might join her in a shout on this side of the room. But it says, no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly or who are blameless. Verse 12 says, Lord all God, Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts you. Now listen, if I need to give y'all a text before we go into this teaching, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the favor of God is all over me. Okay, look at your other neighbor because they didn't catch it. You didn't catch it either. You might catch it after you said the second time. Say, neighbor, the favor of God is all over me. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise for the favor of God that's all over you. You may be seated if you can in the presence of the Lord. Uh, Stacey, I want you to hold on to that, the lyrics to that song because it was very pivotal for us in this message. The favor of God is all over. Hey, hey, oh, let, let us shout. Let us tap the church. I don't care. We'll buy some more chairs. Oh, <laughs> Somebody shout. Just let us shout. We'll buy some more chairs. We ain't worried about them. Somebody else in the room just shout. The favor of God is all over me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of y'all know breakthrough come in different ways? Different times. But it definitely will happen in the house of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, if you ever want a breakthrough, get to the church. If you ever want a miracle, get in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. How, 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 how many of y'all know that when a shift happens, it will shift you? It'll make you recognize where you are and where you are not, right? All right, so, so if you would allow me to share a little bit with you in this book of Psalms. This book, book of Psalms is written by the sons of Korah. Watch this. And the sons of Korah were Levites. And the Levites served in the temple worship, which means the word Levites. Somebody shout Levites. The word Levites mean singers. The word Levites mean musicians and gatekeepers and temple officials and judges and craftsmen. Let, can I say something to y'all? Every one of us should operate like a Levite. Let me say that one more time. Every one of us ought to have a song in our spirit. So when something breaks out wherever you are, you will recognize, wait a minute, I got a song for this one. One thing about a Levite, they were always in position to lead, lead a worship. These sons of, of Korah, they lived after something happened. Listen, listen. Sounds like all of us. Listen to this. When I give you a little history on, on Korah and his sons, Korah was a, a leader. And back then, in the day, he led a rebellion of about 250 community leaders against Moses. He led 250 people against Moses, David, and, and, and that's when they were in the wilderness of the Exodus. 
In the book of Numbers, chapter 16, you'll be able to see that story. And what happened was with the son, uh, with, with Korah and all those, listen to this, y'all. Check this out now. When, when favor is all over you, God will handle the people that came against you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Y'all quiet. Did, did y'all hear me online? Y'all act like y'all didn't hear me in the building. So is my mic working? Because when your enemy come against you, you got to remember who is your shelter, who is your shield, who, who is your buckler, who is your protector. Now watch this. Korah, he, what he did, he took 250 community leaders and they, they came against Moses during the wilderness days of Exodus, Numbers chapter 16. And what happened was, listen to this, uh, God judged Korah and his leaders and, and they all died. They all died, but the sons of Korah, God Allow them to remain. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 26, verses 9 through 11. You can go back and read this because I need you to get some history here about what's happening in this, this psalm right here, right? So perhaps um, uh, doing this song that they, they wrote here, uh, How Lovely Is Your temp, uh, Tabernacle. This is in verse 1 of Psalms 84, verse 1. It says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. And when you really look at this psalm, y'all, check this out, that it, it, it is showing that the sons of Korah are grateful for the mercy that they uh, got from God. And then what happened was they were the sons of Korah, and then they got noticed by the people in the village and the people in the town because of the praise that they had, even in spite of their daddy getting killed. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, when things die around you, you cannot lose your praise. When, when things happen around you and you find yourself going through storms in life, you still can't lose your praise. You ought to just praise God simply because I know it wasn't nothing but God's grace and mercy that brought me through some of the stuff I've been through right now. I wish I had a witness up in here. And this is the hour now. You got to learn how to celebrate when you ain't got everything you want. I just said something. Let me repeat that. I'm going to push rewind and say it again. You got to learn how to celebrate when you don't have everything that you want. And sometimes you ain't going to get what you want. Just celebrate what you got. I ain't got the best job yet, but I'm going to celebrate with the one I got. I ain't got the right man in your life or the right woman in your life, but you better praise with the one that you come on up in here. I ain't got the right attitude, but God getting ready to shift that thing. So I'm going to praise him with what I got. When I read, here it is, Kamiko, when I, when I read Psalms 84, it is, uh, it is the Shabbat. <laughs> Psalms 84, when I read all of it, y'all, it's like, it's the Shabbat. Somebody shout the Shabbat. Okay, what is Shabbat? Andre, what's Shabbat? What's a Shabbat pray? What's a Shabbat? A Shabbat is a praise. Y'all write that down, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-A-C-H, Shabbat. There's a Shabbat praise. All right, let me help you with that, all right? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach you and also lead you in a place where people are going to be wondering why you're acting the way you're acting. You can say, oh, I just got a Shabbat in me. I can't help myself because that Shabbat just showed up. Sometimes you could be in the bank and then suddenly a Shabbat will show up. You could be at the doctor's office and a Shabbat will show up. You could be riding down the street at the red light and suddenly you think about something and a Shabbat will show up. So, Pastor, what is a Shabbat? Okay, let me help you. Let me, it's a praise. Let me, let me take you over to Psalms uh, 47, verse 1. I'm sorry, Stacey, I didn't give you that one. That one just kind of dropped down out of uh, uh, heaven. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Psalms 47. Listen, y'all. I need y'all to get this. Psalms 47, verse 1, it says this. Y'all ready? Oh, clap your hands. All you people, shout to God with the voice of triumph. Y'all see that? What did it tell you to do? Clap your hands. All you people, shout to God the voice of triumph. Right? So I'm going I'm to I'm read that one more time, and I'm going to see how many people got it. It said, oh, clap your hands. All you people. Now give God a shout. A word of triumph. I made it through some stuff. I'm going to praise God anyway. Yeah, you don't like me, but I'm going to praise God anyway. The devil didn't chase me, but he could catch me. I'm going to clap my hands and give him praise. So, so you got to praise God whether, rather, rather than 
wallowing in your troubles. Learn to clap your hands. Somebody shout, learn to clap your hands. Okay, what am I saying? Learn to Shabbat God. <laughs> so y'all going to be in somebody's church and they think they're going to talk over you. And then they're going to say, y'all, they give God a Shabbat pray. And you be the only one clapping because you know what Shabbat means. I wish I had a witness up in here. You're going to walk somewhere and they're going to say, Shabbat God, like you don't know. Clap your neighbor's side. I know what Shabbat means. That means for me to clap my hands. Uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, Trace, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. So, so, all right, so he said, uh, that also means to shout to God with a voice of what? Uh, triumph, right? All right, let me help you again. Look at Psalms 145, verse 4. 145, 4. Watch, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I, I just got to teach this, y'all, because this, because the way y'all acted today, where that song set all of us on fire. I, and it was right on time, too, man. I'm telling you, it just go right along with the pre-teaching, preaching today. Amen. 145 verse 4. Psalms 145 verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Now, now look at the text. Look at the text, Jewel. It says one generation. I don't care how old you are, you still represent a generation. And if we got a church full of generations, somebody shall praise the works to the next. So, but if you ain't been through nothing, you ain't, you ain't asked God, God ain't done nothing, then you ain't got to praise. If, if you don't think God is worthy, then you ain't got a Shabbat. But if I just open it up just for a moment and just ask somebody in the room, will you just put your hands together and show a praise to the next generation? Because back when my mama was living and my daddy was living and my grandmama was living, one thing that I know how to do is to put my hands together and show my children and my children's children that we got to give God a praise no matter what. Somebody shout, you better clap your hands. You better give God a praise. Because tomorrow is coming. <laughs> Somebody shout, Shabbat God. Okay, I'm trying to. So the next generation need to know why you come to church. Somebody shout, hallelujah. So now here it is. Psalms 84 is the Shabbat that celebrates, listen, the fellowship together with others and God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. David, here it is. This psalm celebrates God's presence in Jerusalem back then. And now this psalm celebrates God's presence in this house right now. So when I think about it, I think about why I be just walking through the house and people be, my kids be like, Daddy, what, what, what was that all about? I, I just thought about something. And suddenly a Shabbat just came out. I, I don't know. I, I can't even explain it. Sometimes I prayed about something and it came to pass. I don't know how many of y'all are already receiving the word that over the next 24 days you done already got what God said is going to come to you. Why? That's why my praise is different than your praise because I've been praying for something. See, one thing about my praise is based on my relationship with God through prayer. Okay, so, okay, let me help y'all. God's presence is in new season. If God's presence, watch this, is in new season, that means God's presence is in your house. And if God's presence is in your house, that means it's on your job. That means if it's on your job, that means it's in your business. And if it's in your business, that means it's in your marriage. If it's in your marriage, that means it's in your chaos. If it's in your chaos, it means it's in your joy. If it's in your joy, that means I still got to give God a support because I recognize his presence don't stay at new season. It goes wherever I am because the Bible said I am a temple of God. See, the enemy wants you to think. That you only get your praise when you come to church. Now, baby, all week long I be praising. And when I get to church, I get crazy. I praise through the week, get crazy on Sunday. I wish I had some people up in here that don't mind getting crazy on Sunday because you done praised all week long. I done Shabbat God all week long. 
Okay, let me hurry up. Let me. One day, in God's presence, in the book of Psalms 84, that one day in the, uh, God's presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. I wish I had a witness in the building that knew that the favor of God was all over you. The first thing is, when you know the favor of God is all over you, point number one is this, that, you, that, that you, your desire to be with God. You have a desire to be with God. Point number one, you have a desire to be with God. Somebody shout, I desire to be with God. When you look at verses one and two in uh, Psalms uh, 84, it says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Here are the sons of Korah declaring something uh, to us to let us know that we have to have a desire to be with God. The word desire, listen to me, the word desire means a strong feeling or a wanting of something. And so through the week, I, I, have, a, I have a desire to make a, a strong feeling uh, uh, or an aim or a hope for God's presence to be where I am. So, so look at the worship leaders of the Levites and, and uh, the Levites, the worship leaders. Look what they said. They said they long to be where God is. Yeah. They say it's not about material things. It's not about all those things. It's all about the presence of God. My brothers and sisters, we come to church, but we can't lose uh, uh, why we come to church. We don't come to church for a position. We don't come to church for a title. We don't come to church for prestige. We don't come to church for a certain seat in the building, but we come to get in the presence of God. And if the presence of God ain't here, we just coming for nothing. But one thing I will say from week to week, hallelujah, that the presence of God be resting in the house uh, and he just resting waiting on a praise or a shabbat to take place on your road and I don't know how y'all feel about it but every time I come every Sunday I know that God is waiting on my shabbat uh, if my neighbor don't praise him I'll praise him all by myself can I get a witness up in here and the reason why I praise him is because his favor is all over me somebody repeat this out to me his favor is all over me I have a desire to be with God. Growing up, uh, Wu and David, y'all y'all know that uh, uh, no matter what, everybody in Tommy Lewis' house going to church. I, I don't care what you did Saturday night, Sunday morning, everything, move anything breathing in the house is going to church. He says, let's get up and get ready to go to church. And when you think about it, you got to remember that mom and dad was always trying to get you in a foundation that was going to help you throughout your life. And that foundation was getting under the wheel and the way and the word of God. Hallelujah. So back in the day, I would hide my, ten my church shoes and daddy would make me go to church with some tennis shoes. So y'all wearing, see, they wearing tennis shoes and suits now. Baby, I did that back then. Y'all, that, that didn't just come I was doing that back then out of being hard-headed and trying to be slick. And daddy said, now you going with your black suit on and then white converse. I wish I see push I the edge up. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But but I was school, I was sporting them in church because daddy wouldn't let me not go to church. And it was because of his desire. That's why this generation got a praise for the next generation. And that's what's been happening in our world system that well, it's been a couple of generations that have now uh, uh, declared church ain't even worthy to be coming to. <laughs> My desire to be with God is because of the doors that he opened for me. My desire to be with God is because of the healing that I have experienced through his word. The food that I received when I was hungry. The water that I was able to drink when my water was cut off. The water that I was able to go to my neighbor's house at, at night and, and go over and turn the faucet on from the outside, hoping they water was running when mine wasn't, and go into the house. Y'all don't know nothing about that. And had to put the bucket underneath there. Back then it was a tin. We didn't have a bucket. We had to get pull the milk out to get the water to put water. Y'all don't know what your pastor been through. But I went to the neighbor's house and had to put some water from their faucet into a bucket, take it home, hallelujah, Jesus, and put it in there and took water, took a bath with that much water. Come on up in here. If you ever had just a little bit and you 
you made the best of it. I wish I had some people that would keep it real because y'all ain't always been where you at now. But there's some of y'all up in here that know that you plugged up your extension cord from your neighbor's outside plug and put it in your house and plugged up a lamp because your lights were going to be cut off for three more days. Anybody in the building want to keep it real? But still, the favor of God was all over me. When I, my lights was off, the favor was still there. When my, my water was off, the favor was still there. When, when nobody let me borrow a dollar, the favor was still there. When I didn't have a job, the favor was still there. Come on and give God a praise up in here. Somebody shout, the favor was still there. I was glad my neighbors had lights. Their electric was still working. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my desire. Let's look at something real quick. I want to, I want to see y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all got to quit acting like you done already arrived. You ain't somebody look at your neighbor and say, you ain't already arrived. Yeah, you're, and the reason why, because you're still alive, right? And God ain't through with you yet. Look at, look at the book of Psalms, chapter 27, verse 1 through 6. I need y'all to see this because it's about your desire. Psalms 27, verse 1 through 6. I, I got to hurry up, man. I'm, I'm taking too long. So the favor of God is all... Over me. I wish I would remember that. So next time I say it, I can hear about 200 of y'all opening up your mouth and say it with me. Uh, the favor of God is all over me. And why is the favor of God all over you? Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. When the wicked came up against me to it eat up my flesh, my enemies, and my foes. They stumble. Hey, 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 they stumble. Hey, hey, check out that shot. They stumble. Look at your neighbors now. My enemies stumble. Whoa. Well, look, well, look, when the favor of God is all over you, then your enemies will stumble. Wait a minute. Not only do they trip over themselves, but in just about 30 more seconds after that, they going to fall. See, God be giving us stuff that we don't read. That's why you got to read the Bible. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, read the Bible. When you read the Bible, you'll find the answer to your enemy's attacks. Although I'm being attacked, in a minute they going to fall. You wonder why they skip saying something for two days on Facebook. That's the moment they were stumbling. And then all of a sudden you blocked them. That means they done already failed. Because you don't need to see no more negativity from your enemy on your pay. I wish I would quit. Wait a minute, watch this. Because I got a new desire. Somebody said I got a new desire. Though an army may encamp Against me or around me, my heart shall not fear. Have y'all ever found yourself in a spirit of fear? But I come to tell you that the Bible says I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a, and a sound. Now, now, interesting, wait a minute. The sound mind part is what shook me. Because I can't have a sound mind if I don't know the word. Oh, that is, that is, whoop. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, there it is. Whoop, wait a minute. I done took y'all too far back. Let me reel you back in here. You got to remember no matter what, you got a sound mind. That means I, I know enough word in me. See, the, listen, the enemy knows the word. He trembles. But you got to remember that you got to operate in the word. You can know the word but not operate in the word. When my, when my enemy is encamped around me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise up against me, 
in this, wait a minute, in this, in this, in, in this, I will be what? Now, what is this you're confident in? I'm confident in the word. Even when the enemies are camped about me, the word's still working. Somebody shout, when I'm going through, the word is still working. Why? Because the favor of God is all over me. What's the next verse say? I'm, I got to get out of here. One thing that I've desired of the Lord, that I, that will I seek, that I may dwell where? In the house of the Lord. How often? All the so while I'm, on the, while I'm in the earth, while I'm still in my flesh and living, I need to be in here because this is the house of the Lord. Now, when I die, I want to make sure when I die that I'm going up there in heaven with God so that I can rest with him all the days of my life. Somebody shout, get it right now. Say it again, get it right now. I, you need to remember. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his, in his what? In his temple. Where, where do you need to find your answers? Watch this. In the temple. The answers are in the word. It's in the church. If the preacher is preaching the gospel, your answer is coming. Let me say that one more time. If the preacher is preaching the word and not after your money, not after your body, not after your, after your material things. If he or she is preaching the word, everything you need is in the house. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how long you have not been coming to church. But when you get there, everything you need it's there. Well, wait, Pastor. Wait a minute. How is God going to supply? How is God going to do that? Well, the Bible says, I will supply according to my riches. So God said, no matter how much you want, I got more than that anyway. I'm trying to get out. My ears and turn red. He said, now, wait a minute. If you stay in the temple, I, I see all y'all looking at my ears now. They're like, are they really red? I feel the glory, man. I ain't lying. It says, we got to remember that. You need to remember, listen, y'all, that God is your refuge and your strength and a present help in times of trouble. Okay, Pastor Lewis, so I had some trouble, and I might get in, I might I still need to come to church. Don't ask me what you think. When you at church last Sunday, didn't we have a Shabbat last Sunday? What did the word tell you? That I'll be a present help in your time of trouble. He brought you out of you still alive on by Sunday morning. Come on to church. Somebody say amen. Quit, quit playing around, y'all. Somebody say quit playing around. Oh, let, let me just go through my, let me go. Listen, there is a river of God's favor flowing your way. Tell your neighbor, God will help you in whatever you're going through. I come to tell about 200 of y'all in the building and about 500 of y'all online that you need to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. See, God is working it out for you. All you got to do is know that favor is all over you and that God is about to exalt you. You got to remember no matter what's happening in your life, hallelujah, you just got to trust God. I'm going to end. Uh, so because the Bible is letting us know that, that, that no matter where I am, right, God is there. Somebody shout, no matter where I am, God is there. All right, now, 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 okay, let me, let me, let me go. I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay, 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 so verses 3 and 4 in uh, Psalms 84, 3 and 4. Let's check this out. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for itself, where she may lay her young, even your altars. O Lord of hosts, 
my king and my God. Verse 4, blessed are those who dwell in the house or dwell in your house. They shall be what? Praising you. So if you didn't do no praising through the week, you still not supposed to do it here. If you came in here with a headache, praise the headache away. You came in here, just got the fighting last night, come up in here and just release your praise to God today. You didn't get the job Friday and you mad, you hot, just come on in here because God will supply. Uh, there's a blessing, write this down. There's a blessing for being in the house with God. There is a blessing for being in the house of God, with, with, with God, right? He said, blessed are those who dwell in your house. Somebody shout, there's a blessing here. And so the word blessing, when you look at the word blessing, Eddie, that word blessed means to be happy. How many of y'all, don't raise your hand, but how many of you came in here just kind of feeling some type of way this morning, but all of a sudden praise and worship took over that feeling that you had? You may have walked in here with a little worry and a, and a little anxiety, but something happened when worship started. Think about it now. The birds have their nest. They got somewhere to lay. Don't you know God going to take care of you? The birds happy. Why not you? God will supply all of your needs. Going to Listen, the birds are flying, and they find worms. They catch butterflies flying through the air because their creator makes a way for them. When you find yourself going through something, I need you to remember that favor is all over you. That don't mean you ain't going to go through something, but favor still all over you. Look at Psalm 65 and, and, and 4. I'm giving y'all some scriptures so y'all can read it this week. Uh, Psalm 65 and 4. Psalm 65 and 4. Here it is. Watch it. Psalm 65 verse 4 says, Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. Check this out, Tamika. Here is God. He, is, he says now, if you get to the church, stay with God. He said, I'm going to satisfy all your needs. Something happens when you honor God in the house. God, so what did God say? Why well, I'm fit to help some people. God says, now, I want to dismiss you with that God knows my heart stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Pastor, God know my, I want to be there, Pastor. God know my heart. Yeah, he sure do. That's why he's trying to get you here. Because he knows if he gets you here, the blessing's going to leave with you. But as long as you keep talking about these excuses about God knows my heart, then you're coming against the gospel. Okay. Everybody bow your head. Everybody bow your head. I don't want you to look. Just everybody in the building say, ouch. Okay, raise your head up. Because all of us at some point can say, my bad. Because I wasn't serving God the way I was supposed to serve God. And if one thing, instead of you wanting to repent, but your pride was too bad, too big, you had to say, my bad. Y'all ever been in a place in your life, and then you, you know you were wrong, you were out of order, and you didn't really want to say nothing other than, my bad. Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? Yeah, this, my bad, God. I mean, you know, my, my bad, God. I, I, I didn't serve you the way I was supposed to. My, my bad. Uh, God, uh, uh, I, I didn't walk right. Uh, my bad. I didn't give the way I'm supposed to give. My, my bad. I, I didn't come to church the way I'm supposed to come to church. God, my bad. And God said, okay, you're bad, but let's get better. My bad. Y'all ever told somebody you're going to come pick them up and you, you something happened you forgot or something like that? Then you holler out, oh, my bad, dog. My dog, my bad. You still my BFF, though. My bad. They know what that meant. But see, God wants more than that from us. He wants you to see why it's so important to be in the house. Number three, let me, let me, let me get out. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, 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 
Now, I, look at Psalm 6, 8, 19. Let me show you why it's so important to get in how to do it. I'm going to have y'all stand and we're going to go home. 68, Psalm 68, verse 19. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily, here it is, daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation, Selah. Now, wait a minute. Pastor Lewis, you mean tell me when I come to church and you preaching the gospel, that that's going to show me how God literally loads me every day with benefits? Psalm 6819. Somebody shout Psalm 6819. Belongs to me. So, huh. well, the reason why I like God, love God, is because he always loaded me with benefits. Hey, can I tell y'all a secret? Don't tell everybody on Facebook. I'm just going to tell y'all that when God starts favoring you like this, you're going to run across some haters. But, but, but what you got to do, you got to remember what God said about your enemies. He says, in spite of them encamping about you, he said, don't worry about them. Don't you dare lose heart because I'm bigger than them anyway. And even though it might hurt by the people that's closest to you that will talk about you, that will lie on you, God told me to tell you don't worry about that because I'm getting ready to open up a big old door in your life. I'm getting ready to heal your body like never before. I come to tell somebody today that God said it's at the name of Jesus that every everything and everybody that wounded you, everybody and everything that tried to kill you and tried to disrupt God's plan for your life, God said, I'm getting ready to handle it right now. And I don't know, it might be 10 of y'all in the building, but you better shout, God getting ready to bring me out of it. Somebody shout, God getting ready to bring me out of it. Somebody shout, there's another blessing coming my way. Over the next 14 days, God says, somebody's getting ready to get a breakthrough. Over the next 14 days, God said, you've been feeling bored. You've been feeling lonely. You've been feeling rejected. But listen, God says, get ready because I'm getting ready to excite your body. I'm getting ready to excite your favor. God said, don't you forget that my favor is all over you and quit walking around here like I ain't got you in the hollow of my hand. God said uh, you better remember that you are the apple of my eye and if you're the apple of my eye can't nobody take a bite of you. Hallelujah. God said this is your season. Touch the hand of somebody next to you and tell them this is your season. I believe I got some people in the building that if you want to look at your neighbor and if you just think about it, you ought to tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't make me start testifying about what God did for me. Oh, let me just tell you for a moment. Uh, they lied on me, but God brought me through it. Uh, they talked about me, but God brought me through it. Uh, they were jealous of me, but God brought me through it. Uh, they walked away from me, but God brought me through it. Uh, they stole from me, but God brought me through it. Somebody shout, God brought me through it. Touch your neighbor shout, I'm glad God did it for you. Everybody stand on your feet with me. I'm glad God did it for you. How many of y'all believe there's a blessing waiting on you right now? Mm -hmm. Y'all better get serious about your life. Y'all better get serious about serving God. Because to everything, there's a season.